Hey guys, what's up? Toba Loco here, and today we are going to go through the two semi finals in the Champions League. What a night! Both nights for Liverpool and Spurs. Let's talk about Liverpool. We can't ignore this. I had to do this video. Um, so the subscriber special had to be put back just a few more days. Gives me a chance to edit it a bit more, you know. So just just have this video, you know, just to top you up. Liverpool versus Barcelona. It looked all over. It really did. It was just incredible. Like, you know what happened in the first leg. You know, Messi's free kick absolutely stunned Liverpool. It was... I, I ripped it off. Literally, I ripped the game off at, at the start. And I know Liverpool have a rich history of comebacks and, you know, the 2005 final and stuff like that. But it was just... That game, Origi scored, like, in six minutes, thanks to Henderson, part, like, kind of a weak shot, palmed off the keeper, Origi tapped it in, I was like, okay, fair play. Um, but I thought to myself, hmm, it might just stay like this, you know, sort of like a 3-1 a aggregate sort of thing. And we got a second goal, which I believe was Wijnaldum, uh, crossed into the box, and it just sort of, like, Wijnaldum hit it as hard as he could, and it just, uh, to Stegen just couldn't get his uh, body behind it. And it made it 2-0 and I was just sat there and I was just thinking, okay, you know, maybe 3-2, I'll take it, you know, I'll take it at this stage. You know, Barcelona, if they get... Uh, Barcelona looked like they were going to get a goal. Like, let's be honest, they really did look like they were going to get a goal. Alisson was just keeping Messi out. They also missed a couple of chances as well. Um, the only reason why Wijnaldum was on was, was because Suarez uh, injured Robertson on purpose. And that's a bit of a dick move. And then suddenly Wijnaldum scores two goals, uh, like I said, the goal from the cross where he smashed it um, at the keeper and it still went through anyway. And then you also had the header, the looping header, that literally like 50 seconds afterwards or something like that. Literally, I, I couldn't believe it. I, I was jumping, I was like, oh my god, like, what's what's happening sort of thing, you know. And I thought 3-3, you know, we could take it to penalties, uh, take it to extra time even as well, you know, maybe try and stun them in extra time sort of thing. We definitely had the momentum at that point. We were a weaker side and we still did it. And and, and then the fourth goal, what a mo moment of genius by Trent Alexander-Arnold. I think this kid is going to be... Probably one of the best um, defenders for a long time in England. Um, he's, he's showing lots of potential to be a fantastic player. He's been great all season for Liverpool. Um, definitely first choice right back for England in my opinion. But that corner was just genius. He started walking away from it and then he... <laughs> you all saw it, right? You, you know, I don't have to explain it, but yeah, like he just booted it straight to Origi, nobody was looking, there was only like one, I think PK was in the box and he was, well he was on the line sort of thing, but by the time Origi hit it, it was just too late, and literally Anfield went mental, I, oh my god, I almost, I was, I was so emotional then, so emotional, you don't know what that's like for a Liverpool fan, I was getting peop uh, like people saying, you know, like different people who support different teams, like Arsenal fans, Man United fans, uh, you know, saying that was incredible. And they were saying that they wanted Liverpool to win the Champions League, and I was like, well, you know, it's all, it all depends who we get in the final sort of thing at that point anyway. Um, but yeah, it was incredible. I all, I was, I could feel tears in my eyes sort of thing for the squad. You could see the unity there. You could see the passion for it. Um, Klopp's done a fantastic job at Liverpool. We might not win the Prem. It might be a little bit too out of reach last day of the season Brighton's got a beat City don't think it's gonna happen sort of thing but fantastic season back-to-back -back finals can't argue with that can't argue that's not failure by any stretch of the imagination especially when you think of where Liverpool were a couple of years ago just incredible night incredible night for Liverpool I could watch that game over and over again it was just mental just the scenes and everything seeing you never walk alone straight at the cop end sort of thing. It was fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. The second game, which was Spurs, who also pulled off quite a decent comeback. I wouldn't say it was quite as good as Barcelona because people say, oh, well, it's harder to come back in the same game. But I actually think it's harder to come back in the second leg because you can go in there with a the mindset of, oh, um, this, this is already over sort of thing. So 
Tottenham were only 1-0 down um, coming into the leg and then Ajax scored, um, which made it 2-0. But they only had a home goal, so Tottenham only needed two away goals to tie and then the third away goal. And that's exactly what they did with Lucas Moura. I didn't see the first two goals. Um, I was a little bit late getting back, so I won't discuss too much about them sort of thing. But you could see towards the end of the game, Tottenham was getting momentum and... You know, credit to Ajax for getting that far. A young squad like that, give it a couple of years and they're going to be really good. I mean, I know De Jong's off to Barcelona and that squad might get picked apart. But those players, like I'm saying, those players will be so good in a couple of years. I think, them, I think Holland, like as an international team, are going to be incredible with like delay, um, you know, De Jong. Uh, like you know all those players like you know and I, I know he's not Dutch but you've got Ziyech as well he's been fantastic as well good young unit like I've said in my previous videos but credit to Spurs that last goal I have to say when Lucas Moura hit it I I was expecting something but the the power of the shot was quite weak it was very like I don't know it, it kind of caught Onana off guard I think a little bit I swear it did, um, but yeah, uh, I, like you got Pochettino crying at the la last whistle. Spurs were mental, and I, I don't really, obviously being a Liverpool fan, I don't really like the other teams around around us. Obviously, you know, you don't really like cheer them on, but at the same time, I was like, yes, sort of thing. Now that was a great moment for Spurs, and you know, that's their first final, and they could lift the Champions League before before Arsenal and they could match Chelsea's as well with by the way spending basically nothing this season and still getting to the Champions League final new stadium as well that's probably brought on a bit of momentum for them they beat Man City in arguably one of the greatest games this year next to the Liverpool Barcelona game <laughs> and um you know it's you can you can feel something special is going on at Spurs at the moment but Pochettino said something weird the other day he said that even if Spurs won the Champions League he'd leave because he um, I, I just had to sort of like pause and think well why why would you leave when you win the Champions League it was almost like when Chelsea won the um, Champions League and they had Roberto Di Matteo there and for some reason they just got rid of him and it was just like, why? He won the Champions League, the thing that you were after for years. And he basically brought it to you and you're like, nah, get rid of him. It's like, why? Like, give him a chance. But, yeah, I don't know. Um, we'll see what happens, really, with uh, Pochettino and Tottenham. But, uh, 1st of June, Liverpool versus Spurs final, all English final. That hasn't happened since 2008 with Manchester United and Chelsea. Um... If my personal predictions, I'm, it's going to be a little bit biased, but taking into account Champions League experience, um, Champions League final experience, and current season form, I would say probably Liverpool will win it. But it'll be a very tough game, and it'll be a very enjoyable one. And to be honest, losing a, if Liverpool lost against Spurs in the final, I wouldn't be angry because at least the Champions League is coming back to England and not going to Madrid constantly like it did for the last six years or so. We've got the Europa League tonight um, that could see uh, all English final as well potentially Arsenal and Chelsea. Arsenal do have the upper hand at Valencia they are away from home though and they're away from home. Arsenal are poor. They've been poor anyway like they, they for some reason they just don't want top four um, it's the same with Spurs. They've dropped um, so many points as well, but they're yet they're in this Champions League final. Um, Chelsea are a little bit better. I mean, they picked up points over the weekend, but they they're one one against Frankfurt, but they do have the away goal, so they just got to stop Frankfurt from scoring. Although Frankfurt have got great strikers like um, Jokic and Rebic as well. Um, they've been in fantastic form all season. Um, so we'll have to see what happens tonight. But anyway. Um, let me know who you got for the Champions League final 1st of June. I just thought I'd do a little video just to tide you guys over into this, um, like I promised, a thousand subscriber special. Um, I, it's going to need a little bit more time editing it because 
um, I want it to be special sort of thing and it's been a busy week so now nah, just give me time um, but anyway if you like this video if you did then like it subscribe uh, keep it loco and I'll see you again for the next video